Hokulife is finally making its way to the Nintendo Switch and console, so I know you're curious about it and want to know if this game is worth the hype. Hello you gorgeous human being, it's Miss Bubbles. In today's episode of Before You Buy, I'm sharing with you everything that you need to know about Hokulife to decide if it's the game for you. So this game is a cozy, creativity-filled community sim that draws a lot of inspiration from Animal Crossing. As you can see, you start by customizing your character by having a limited selection of hairstyles, hairstyle color, eyes, and skin. Then you give yourself a name and you find yourself stepping off a strange train station. You'll notice that you have only one way to go, which leads you to an inn where you meet Moss and Omo, the first two villagers that you will get to interact with. Based on the dialogue, you can kind of sense that your character was never meant to come to this town. Regardless, you decide to stay, you get a spare room in the inn, and that's all until you get your own house. The next day you will wake up and that's when your journey begins. A tutorial that took me about 10 hours to finish, which is pretty long and it felt like I was playing some kind of JRPG, begins with simply meeting the villagers and then starting your first quest of finding a missing scarf. Soon enough you're going to get a lot more quests and that will help you dive deeper into the main gameplay mechanics which we will cover later on in this video. The game looks very beautiful and charming and you can definitely catch the relation to the Animal Crossing art style. I appreciate the pop of color and the beautiful textures but there's also some work to be done especially in the shadow departments like some of the butterflies shadows just look a little bit off. The world itself is separated into small areas such as the main place where you can find the shop, fashion store, and inn. Then you have the city center with a lobby to access various stores made by community members themselves as well as a seasonal shop. You can also get access to the main town where yourself and the villagers will be having their houses so you can live and have a good time. And from there you can reach the beach but also unlock access to mines, Aubrey's farm, a small forest, and more. As much as I enjoyed exploring these areas my gripe here is with the camera controls you can only zoom in and out but you can't rotate the camera so it makes it a little bit difficult to see what's behind a house or a tree and it even puts you in a position where talking to a villager moves you to this weird camera angle if other objects happen to be around moving to the sound department there is no voice acting here so you can expect yourself to be reading a lot of dialogue Sadly, this was unamusing to me. The characters just lack personality, so I found myself just squishing the like button. I mean, squishing the skip button. You can squish the like button as well if you want to. Come on, I'm waiting for you. Squish it. Squish, squish. <laughs> Jokes aside, I was really mashing the skip button because I just didn't really care about what the villagers wanted to say whatsoever. On the other side of the spectrum, we also have very chill and relaxing music. It reminded me a lot of Animal Crossing New Leaf, which to me has one of the best soundtracks in the history of gaming. You can fight me and I will win. But despite the charm at first, the tunes got quickly repetitive, so I turned that music way down. As for the sound effects, they're very well done. You'll encounter the sound of the waves at the beach, the rain, fishing rod reeling in, and even fun musical notes when collecting resources, which I found very fun. Finally, the menu system where you can access that through your backpack is very easy to understand and I'm always happy for that. So you can find everything in there which makes the game easier to navigate. And this leads us to the gameplay loop, which will help you determine if Hoko Life is the game for you. As I mentioned earlier, the game starts with a massive tutorial to slowly unlock new features. This is accompanied by the newly added Mayor Merits, where the more you do something, the closer you get to unlocking one of the 75 plus gameplay features. These are divided between social, decoration, collecting, and more with different rows. So the more, let's say, you wave at villagers, the more you cut down trees, plant flowers, harvest fruits and veggies and so on, the closer you'll be getting to unlocking new features like sprinting, the bomb, the bronze pickaxe, minimap, fishbait and more. But the problem here is that the system is very strict. You'll only unlock things chronologically and this reduces the pace at which you're getting rewarded for your hard work and I found that a bit frustrating. For instance, I was trying to unlock the bronze pickaxe but I couldn't because I had to make sure that I unlocked all the other features in the same row first and that kind of also needs the 
different tasks for you to do to unlock them so i was doing a lot of things that i wasn't really excited for and i felt like i was having this unnecessary grind to go through so i can reach the thing that i'm trying to get now the essence of this game is creativity and that's delivered through designing items decorating the town and fixing your and your villagers houses to your heart's full desire when you start, you only have two villagers, but soon enough you can build different types of houses that require different materials and you slowly welcome new ones who in turn have new requests for you, which all ties to the tutorial that is slowly teaching you how to do things. In town, you have Sally's workshop, which is your key to either making your own unique designs or crafting pre-existing ones. So as you can imagine, the selling point of this game is the amount of things that you can create and have fun with. After you get a blueprint for, let's say, a bed, you can go ahead and make a bed however you want it to be you can use different pieces decorations fabric dye paint and more and the sky is really the limit here this brings us to the city center where you can set up your own store and upload the various creations that you have made or the fun part is visiting other community members stores and enjoying what they crafted by downloading them yourself and man oh man are some people super crazy <laughs> insanely creative from kitchens and desks to various decorations, there's a lot for you to find. And very similar to Animal Crossing, you can also use every creator's special code to access their store so you can find more and more items to download. Now, something that you have to keep in mind is that everything you gather will be in your backpack and eventually it can be transferred to different storages. But I find it weird that I can't manually sort things so I can only go by the game sorting system which uses the sort by type or by amount or whatnot and this is necessary when you need so many resources for your creations and you just feel yourself not being able to place things the way that you want them to be in your inventory anyways apart from this at one point you're gonna be just tired and you want to break you want to do something else so you can enjoy fishing tournaments buck catching farming cooking as well as furniture and clothes shopping even the mine has a fun system where the deeper you go the darker it will be but the rarer the ores you'll find you also so we'll need eventually some lanterns and a mining hat to access these. Designing your town is very fun. You can place things wherever you want them to be and you can rotate everything, yes, including houses, so it will make every single town just feel unique and different and I can only imagine how crazy you're gonna be when you're playing this on your Nintendo Switch and just enjoying and having a good time. However, I find this video a little bit difficult to make because every time I have something good to say, there's something to contradict it that is not so good. So the game for me is just limited by how strict it is not only in terms of the merit system that I told you about earlier but also through the very linear tutorial where things in gameplay mechanics are not unlocked without a specific sequence this will even go as far as trying to complete the different requests that your villagers are going to give you one of them asked me to make a cupboard so i thought okay let me just make two you know i need storage anyways so might as well and the game refused to let me give the second cupboard that i made to the villager it would only let me give them the first one not only that but it also took me such a long time to buy and sell items from moss and the problem also is just accompanied in one word with how slow the game is even at 15 hours where i feel like i've unlocked pretty much a lot of things in the game, I just feel unaccomplished. This can cause trauma if you're going through things like that in life, you know, like you do so much and you always feel like, damn, I'm not doing enough. Just kidding. This was a joke. Just don't be too serious. We're, we're, none of us is leaving this earth alive. Newsflash. Wow, that took a grim turn. Let, let's, uh, let's, let's leave philosophical bubbles behind. Let, let's come back to, to, to the bubbly bubbles, all right? Back to Hoko Life. The slowness is even when you're selling items. You can sell the same one in bulk, but you can't multiple select to sell even though you can craft in bulk. It, it just doesn't make sense. Another problem is that even when the tutorial is pretty lengthy, it also fails to tell you a lot of things that you actually do need to know. Like, how the heck do I actually attach the bait to my fishing rod? Or how in the world do I properly craft things? For example, I was trying to make this lamp for a villager and the blueprint says that I need a light bulb, which I have. Like, I, I, I had it in my inventory. But turns out you actually need to buy the light bulb packet from Sally first so you can craft it. I would have never guessed that so thank goodness for the Hoko Live Discord community and the helpers over there because I was asking them questions left and right and they were helping me. If it wasn't for them, 
I would have just been lost all the time. And this is pretty much how my experience with Hoko life is. Every moment that I feel like things are finally clicking, it just gets frustrating and confusing and I get lost and I feel like I'm wandering around aimlessly and I just want to stop and take a break. Now you can argue and say that this game is still in early access so it means it's not complete, but I will counter argue and say that at this point the foundation of what to be expected is already there so I wonder what more will be added to hook me in. Regardless, once the full release is out I'll make sure to let you know what new features are added in the pinned comment. But all in all, keep in mind that this game is developed by one person and that person is called Robert. I think that Robert is managing to give so much in terms of community building, the Discord server is amazing, and giving creators the absolute freedom to go crazy with the things that they want to craft and the different competitions that they throw on the server. It was just very beautiful, so respect for that. As Hoko Life gets closer and closer to releasing on the Nintendo Switch and other consoles, I know that you want to know how performance will be there, so make sure to check the pinned comments in a month because I will update you on that. As for now, I'm playing the early access version on Steam and I can see that the game runs pretty well in terms of smoothness and there are a few settings to play around with to make the game run on your PC. But I know for a fact that we definitely need more optimization. My PC was going off like a freaking jet. I felt like I'm sitting at like, you know, like an airport or something and the temperature shot up and with this weather it was not good at all so every time i played i had to turn on my pc not my pc i had to turn on my ac and i had to put my headphones in because i just wanted to cancel the noise i even removed like those glass panel thingies from my pc and it didn't help i also experienced some bugs where my character just suddenly decides like i don't want to move i don't want to do anything the only thing i'll do is blink so i had to reset the game when it did that and sometimes like the fishies just decided to be like mm, i don't want to be a fish anymore i'm just gonna sit there so also that had to be reset every time i encountered that hopefully these will be fixed in the full release because as i can tell robert is taking a lot of bug submissions and working on them one by one you can also expect to sit through a few loading screens when going from house to house or area to area but thankfully these are very quick as for controls i mostly played with the controller when doing regular tasks but i found myself having to use the mouse and keyboard when designing because otherwise nothing made sense for me when using the controller it was just crazy and i also highly recommend and don't say i didn't warn you to use the controller when you are fishing Finally, the last shortcoming, for example, is when I try to plant or use the shovel. I feel like I had to reposition my character a little bit more than I should to target the correct tile. We talked a lot about the good and the bad, but it's time to decide if Hoko Life is going to be a game that you will enjoy. As always, we're gonna go by this game is for you if, not for you if, and my personal verdict. Hoko Life is definitely the game for you if you love creativity. The world here is your oyster, and if you know how to design, you're gonna be in happy land. It's also for you if you enjoy a more slow-paced, let's take our time vibe. It's for you if you want a life sim game that ditches the constant need to focus on relationships and gives you a more linear path to follow. It's also for you if you want to support an indie dev who has so much passion for this project and is always looking forward to getting feedback. However, Hoko Life is not the game for you if you're thinking, yay, we finally got our PC version of Animal Crossing or like a budget-friendly Animal Crossing. It's not. Of course, there's inspiration from the main character being human to the villagers being animals, the animations and whatnot, but the focus here is the creativity aspect, which I can say Animal Crossing lacks. This is also not for you if you think it's the typical farming life sim where you build a family and you get born animals and so on. On the contrary, Hoko Life is here to give you a twist and a break from the other typical entries in the genre. And it's also not for you if you're not that creative and you don't care about the designing aspect at all because I feel like that is the main hook and the target for the people. <laughs> Saying that felt like I'm the, the president and I'm giving some kind of speech. As for me, I have a lot of mixed feelings about Hoko Life. 
I enjoyed the art style and the complete freedom to customize my town and my house and so on. I had a fun time collecting bugs and fish, planting trees and flowers and all in between. Unfortunately though, I found it difficult to tolerate the very slow pacing and how lifeless the villagers felt, so I was just completely disconnected from them and the world as a whole. This does not mean that the game is not good enough, it just means that it was not for me. Squish that like button if the video helped you out and don't forget to let me know, are you buying Life and which platform are you going for? This video is sponsored by the best and bubbliest people in the world and these are the people of the Bubbly Club. If my videos save you some cash and I know they do, then make sure to check out my Patreon page for some fun perks. Thank you so much to my Bubbly patrons and a special shout out to Let's Go, Josh, Justin, Mikey, Faye, Jacob, Stephanie, Chris, Christian, Dan, Evan, James. Janet, Jose, Nathan, and Ante for going the extra mile. As always, stay bubbly, stay positive, and I'll see your gorgeous, beautiful, amazing self in the next one. Bye!